First reading today, we hear about Elijah being sent to Elisha. And Elisha is going to um, take over where Elijah left off, pick up his prophetic work. But what is important in this is to recognize the response of Elisha. So Elijah comes up behind him, hooks his, puts his cloak over him. In the ancient world, it was the cloak that was the sign of the prophet. And so it was uh, the, 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 the mantle that they wore, so that everyone that way would know that this was a prophet. So when Elijah comes up behind him as Elisha is plowing, just lays the cloak over his back, Elisha understood exactly what that meant, that he was called to be a prophet, that he was called to succeed Elijah. But it's now the next piece that is important for all of us. At that point, Elisha goes back, slaughters the twelve yoke of oxen, uses the plowing equipment to burn, breaks it all up and burns it. There is no possible way for Elisha to return to his former life. He has drawn a line. It is over. He has chosen to serve the Lord. Whatever that is going to mean. Because at this point, he would have no clue what's going to come. He doesn't know how difficult it might be. He doesn't know if he's going to doubt. He doesn't know if he's going to question. He doesn't know what's going to happen. But what he does know is that whatever happens, he cannot turn around. He can't go back. There, there aren't any more oxen there. There's no plowing equipment. He's done. He has changed his life. He has turned to the Lord. And there is no looking back. We have to look at that for ourselves. Are we willing, I mean truly willing, to do whatever it is that God asks us to do? Most of us will give lots of lip service to that. Oh, whatever God wants. Yeah, as long as God wants what I want. No, 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 no. Do I want what God wants is the question. Am I willing to do what God wants? Am I willing to live my life for the Lord? Because we must understand again where we're headed. I keep telling you things are going to get worse. But it's not just that things are going to get worse. You see the mobs, you see the nonsense going on out in Seattle right now, and all this nonsense. Yeah, these are some really deranged people doing some idiotic things. That's not what this is about. This is a battle of good versus evil. Period. Every single person will need to make a choice. It is either God or it is Satan. There is no in-between. If you try to find an in-between, you have chosen Satan. It is just that simple. You either are 100% for the Lord or you're with Satan. That's how serious this is. So now let's come back and ask again. Are you willing to do God's will? Are you willing to let go of everything? Because we're going to have to. Your money isn't going to mean a thing. Where we live isn't going to mean a thing. Anything that we've been holding on to isn't going to mean a thing. Are you willing to let go of it all? Are you willing to say to God, I will do whatever you ask? Symbolically speaking, 
I will slaughter the oxen. I will burn the plowing equipment. I am going to leave my past behind. I am going to give myself wholeheartedly to you. Whatever it is that you're going to ask of me. I don't know what that's going to mean. I don't have a clue how easy or difficult that might be, just like Elisha. But I am going to live my life for the Lord. So that means not just having the Lord as part of our life. It means living our life for God. Is that what we're willing to do? Because that's the choice every last one of us is going to have to make. It is that serious. And I'm not just speaking in hyperbole. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm telling you the truth. That is where we are going. That is what this is all about. You go back and you can read in the third chapter of the book of Genesis... And you will see that from the very beginning, Satan has been trying to destroy the human race. Our Lady told us what's going to happen. Satan's going to attack particularly the family to destroy it. He's going to attack the church, because that's the family of God, to destroy it. He's going to attack everything that we look to for security. It's all going. Just as Jesus one day walked with his apostles into the temple, said, look at all these things. The day is coming when they're all going to be gone. Not one stone will be upon another. I don't know that it's going to get to the point necessarily where every church is going to be destroyed so there won't be one stone upon another. What I can tell you is everything that we hold on to as an institution is going to be gone. It is going to be a travesty to watch as priceless works of art are going to be destroyed by some of these people with no conscience. It is going to be a tragedy to watch as beautiful buildings are destroyed Our faith is not in a work of art. Our faith is not in a building. Our faith is not in the money. Our faith is not in anything except the person of Jesus Christ. So we can't be holding on to any of the externals, as good as they may be, as beautiful as they may be. It's all going to be gone. Are you willing to serve God with your whole heart and soul and strength? That is the question. That is exactly what Elisha did. He recognized the call. He turned away from his past way of life, even though it was good. He knew what God was calling him to. Everything of the past was over. There was no turning back. So that's the choice we're going to have to make. And it's not in the terribly distant future. So we have to start getting prepared for that. By that I don't mean, oh my goodness, if that's happening, I better go to the store and buy as much food and stack up my basement as much as I can. No, 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 no. I mean get down on our knees and pray. I mean look seriously into the heart and ask yourself some really serious questions. I mean preparing your mind and your heart to be detached from everything except God. Now again, understand what that means. To be detached does not mean that if you're married, you can go home and throw your wife and kids out, or your husband and kids, as the case may be. That's not what I mean. I mean we have to have the spiritual detachment to be able to say, I want to love these people perfectly. An attachment is selfish, so we need to be detached so that it's selfless. If God wants to take my husband or my wife or my children to do whatever, I'm willing to let that go. 
Are we willing to let our house go? Are we willing to let our church go? Are we willing to let our money go? Are we willing to let whatever our little treasures are, my widget collection hanging on the wall, am I willing to let it go? Is there anything in your life that is more important than God? While we will all say, oh no, ask yourself if God asked you to give this up. How important is it? Are you willing to slaughter the oxen? Are you willing to burn the plowing equipment? Are you willing to walk away from your farm? Because that's what Elisha did. And that is what God is going to call all of us to. Because all of this is passing away. Heaven will not. God will not. So this is all just temporary. And this isn't, you know, what I'm talking about isn't going to be a hugely long-term thing. Sister-in-law called me yesterday and was asking all kinds of questions. I said, don't worry about it. It'll all be over with in about four years. Don't worry about it. It's going to be a little ugly between here and there. It's going to be more than a little ugly. But it's not going to be tragically long going to be long enough that Jesus himself said of the time we're not shortened, even the elect would fall astray. So don't think this is going to be a cakewalk. We have to be serious. Absolutely serious. It is God or it is Satan. Just be that clear. It is good or it is evil. There is no in-between. So we have to make our choice. And that's what we have to prepare ourselves for. That's what our hearts and minds have to be prepared for. So take that to heart. Bring it to prayer. And ask yourself, when God calls, what will be your response?